Hi everyone and welcome back to the painting channel for this week's watercolour tutorial and watercolour in more ways than one not just the medium because the subject is that of Hothfield Common and a, an area just below it which is water meadows and that's what I'm trying to portray for you this afternoon. So water meadows it is, it's a time lapse tutorial so I hope you can enjoy it and please don't forget that if you want to see the full version of this and many others then you do need to pop over to my Patreon page which is all the details are listed below in the, in the information underneath this video so please hop along there and if there's something you like you want to become a patron you'll be so welcome and it would be fantastic to have you come on board and enjoy all my real time videos videos which are being added to uh, all the time so it's something that you will enjoy moving forward. For now I'm working uh, the watercolour here and I'm using or pre-mixing cerulean blue and I want a very small touch of Indian yellow just for the clouds. Now leaving white paper is fine but to just uh, put a little bit of yellow into that just excites the senses to make them think that the clouds are that much brighter. And I'm putting a bit of cerulean blue in now just to set up the blue sky between the cloud forms. And now I'm going in with some Indian yellow and just trying to, with a little bit of orange in there, and just try and set up that really bright light source that's in the distance and that's almost my horizon. Now I'm using a bit of Indian yellow and a bit of thalo cyan in green just to give me that uh, lovely lush grassy margin that's between all of that higher ground further along and also the water that we're avoiding and keeping my feet from getting wet which actually I didn't actually manage. I did get wet on the day I was painting here. So yeah it's easy done but I'm adding a little bit more yellow to the green now and as that comes on down through to the foreground now I'm mixing up some blues. Some uh, There's a little bit of um, magenta and ultramarine blue went in just to give me the suggestion of the water. Now that said I've lifted a little bit out and I will lift some more out and I'm not making it very dense. This will dry up an awful lot lighter. So just watch out for that because um, you know I've added in a little bit more Indian yellow into the mix now so it's making it a little less blue as it comes right down into the foreground. And I really need to now leave that and let that set up and dry. So while I'm doing that we're now going to start thinking about just tapping in a little bit of information. Oh, by the way, I am using a round brush, a medium round brush, and I'm also uh, working on a rough paper, which I think is um, um, Saunders Waterford. I'm not too sure. I'm actually adding in a little suggestion of the reeds that are poking out of the water. Now they are going through the blue, so they're not actually going to be as bright at this stage. But when they dry out, they will be lighter and they will allow me to add some of the information further on into this painting. So, yeah, <laughs> it, it's sort of just setting the mood, really. This is just the first pass. And uh, now I'm adding in some darker values and I want to try and mix up an indigo and some Indian red and I don't want it to be too strong because I'm going back into the sky. It's dry so I'm just going in with the weight of the clouds at the very bottom of those white puffy clouds are the grey masses that give them the weight and hold them what makes them look like clouds basically. I'm not worried about coming down to meet the horizon line because that's going to be a tree line but I'm using various little values of this purple color that it's a dirty purple because we're using an Indian red and we're using indigo blue so neither of those are going to give me a perfect um, purple and which is not what I'm looking for I just want a subtle purple that when it dries off it will dry uh, a lot lighter than you see it on this painting right now so it will work out about right but what I will do is add a few more deeper pigments in the center just to add a little bit more weight and also punch out the whiteness of those clouds that are above them. So uh, 
this is pretty much all I'm doing for the sky. It doesn't need an awful lot. And at the end of the day, the water meadow picture that I'm painting is all about the water and the foreground. So the sky, it becomes a bit of a supporting act. And providing it reads correctly in terms of value and the chroma, then it doesn't need to be super detailed because your senses will tell you that they are clouds. If everything is in the right place, and the colors are about right, and the values of each of those colors are about right, then we've, we've got it about where we need it to be. Now I'm putting a bit of that same mix, which is somewhat reflective of the clouds above, into the top end of the water. I am protecting uh, the um, little bits of orange that I did put in a little while ago. So I am protecting those as I move forward, but I'm eating that dark into the edges or the margins of the green grasses. I'm not just putting a straight brush in there. I'm tapping little shapes and edges so it creates the illusion of working the negative space and allowing me to see bits of grass poking up. And similarly with missing bits out in the water, I'm just showing you that the, you've got the lighter blue, you've got the darker blue, uh, you've got the cloud forms and you've got the heavier parts of the clouds that may well be that much darker over my head. And I'm protecting the little parts around and working my brush around those nice little reedy bits that I will need to work on further on in the painting. So this is pretty much the second pass because, as I said, the first pass we blocked in and we've allowed that to dry. Now we're coming in with a second pass and we're adding more detail. That's what the whole thing is, that you work in a succession of layers in this particular instant. And each successive pass, you add more information until you finally end up going over it and putting not so much going over the whole thing, but you just add in those final little tweaks of details and highlights or dark shadows that you need to put in just to complete the painting. And that's all this is. It's a process of uh, doing more and more or in terms of actual paintwork, less and less, but it does become a little more time consuming. Now I'm putting in a very, very strong translucent orange. Uh, it is one of my Schmincke colors and I do enjoy it. I know there are very similar colors from Daniel Smith. I haven't tried them all yet, but I do intend to have a use of some of them. But what I've deliberately done is put the warm evening light that's starting to form on those tree lines, uh, and I've put them in, in a very strong orange. And I've used some more of that into the, uh, it's not quite the far distance, but it's certainly all those dried, warm, rushy flower um, grasses, I don't know what you call them, reeds, I suppose, but they are that far off in the distance and unaffecting me. Now I'm using some indigo and I'm using some uh, transparent orange to give me a warm dark, to give me that nice, rich, dark color, but on a warmish value. That's why I introduced the orange into that. And it's the first mark of my trees. I did want the uh, orange to fade off, and it has done. It was allowed to dry, and now I'm going in with tree forms. And I've changed my brush. I've changed over to a half-inch dagger brush, which is a rosemary brush, and she makes some tremendous brushes, I have to say. This is one of them. It's a sable blend, but it is the most remarkable brush that I come across, certainly not just in watercolor, but for oil and acrylics too, I use the similar design brush uh, for those media. And it allows me to tap little marks, broader marks, straight edges. It's fantastic. So versatile. Anyway, before I keep spouting on the virtues of this particular brush, I'm going along the whole of the horizon line with my tree line, and I'm tapping out little tree forms. And it's not. I'm not trying to evoke any different tree shapes, merely suggesting to you and allowing your brain to connect the dots and tell me that the, the trees are trees. Now, if I get the values about right and going back to values which are really important, if I get them right, then your brain will accept the fact that they are trees. If the values are wrong or the colors are wrong and it doesn't read correctly, then your brain will not associate these shapes or forms as trees. So it tells me that if they look like trees at this distance, I've got everything about right. 
What you see I'm doing is using the very edge of that dagger brush to create little marks, little indents, negative spaces coming into those um, that top line of, of uh, uh, grasses and stuff that you can see. So just by dragging the dark paint into the light paint, it's working negative, as I said, but it creates the illusion that there is more growth up there and a lot more happening just with a few strokes of the brush. It's nothing serious. Now I'm taking a few darker marks of the uh, indigo further up into those oranges. Again, it's giving you another layer of trees, of forests, of scrub in that distance. Now for uh, another color, indigo and um, thalocyanin green. And if you're not sure about it, test it on an old, old piece of paper. Piece of paper that hasn't worked as a painting, just check them out. Adding a little bit of yellow into that just takes it away from the uh, green that it was. And I just want to suggest some of the marks between the dead grasses on and where the bank becomes grassy and lush because of all the water. And I'm just putting in those first few marks that suggest, um, I don't know, what do you call it, sort of terrain or undulations, shadows, whatever you want to call it, but various different colors that go into the green. It's not all just one color of green. And I'm actually mixing up several different greens now. Various cool greens and a lot more Indian yellow in the green. Just, just to suggest uh, all the different marks that you can see. And I put in a quite a dark mark, which just suggested the bank or edges of the water. And I'm tapping some of those colors into the water right now and suggesting the edges of the bank. And the bank is very boggy, it's very, very wet. Uh, you do need a pair of Wellington boots when walking around the edges here because you can walk on thinking it's quite firm and actually the grass is just a tuft, it's full of water underneath and you start going down pretty quickly. So you do have to watch yourself. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, it's just a wonderful little area to go and visit and paint at. And as you see, I've uh, really carefully left those little reedy bits in the water on the edges of the margins so that I can go back in and create those further on. But in the meantime, I'm just looking at the grassy green areas and trying to make them as rich as I can in the sunlight, but it's not cool. There's a lot of warmth going on. Now I'm using some uh, ultramarine blue and I'm just putting a bit of um, Indian red to that to come into adding more scope to the detail in the water. So this actually is the third pass. This is the third layer. And you will see that because of that, I'm adding less information in terms of less paint, should I say, into the layer. I'm not covering over exactly what I did last time. So I'm using some of that to come through. So now we have the light and the mid light, as it were, if you want to call it that, and then the darkest dark that we're coming in with now. So it suggests that there's a lot of variation in the sky above and also the clouds that are reflecting in this very, very still puddle of water. Well, it's not a puddle, it's a huge, it's quite a large lake of water, but you get what I understand, you, you hopefully you understand what I'm trying to get at. And it's just lots of bits of information, lots of little taps of colors that suggest a whole multitude of different elements in that water surface that you can see. Now I'm looking at the reedy tufts in the water and on the edges and also the far distance. And I've added in quite a dark start with that very, very warm, a little bit of uh, orange and the reds and umbers going in there and I think I put a bit of neutral tint in I'm not can't remember I think I did um, but you know something very similar to that just keeping it on the warm dark side and very transparent that's the thing with a lot of my colors they are transparent colors uh, for the uh, astute of you you will see actually in addition to my normal 17 colors there are another six and going from those, well, the details will be in the details under this video. But I've added a six that I enjoy carrying in another little pan. And I've just added them by gluing little pans into uh, my Craig Young box. And Craig, if you're watching this, I do apologize. I haven't paid due respect to your wonderful handmade watercolor set. Uh, I do enjoy it, but I just want 
some more colour pots in there. I may even afford to commission you to build a special one with extra slots for me one day. Anyway, I digress. Back to this. Um, yeah, the I'm using a lot of oranges and yellows just to suggest these grassy tufts, both back in the background and also right up front and using the edge of this dagger to suggest line not just sweeping marks but i can actually create uh, individual branches of the grasses or the thicker tufts so it's a marvelous brush for those reasons you can see me almost drawing with the brush and having a lot of fun with that and creating the different marks that uh, merely suggest, I'm not trying to create each piece of grass, I'm merely suggesting that that's what they are and your brain I hope will do the rest for me. Now I'm definitely putting in some darker greeny blue or cooler blues and greens to suggest the shadows, the thick dark color to the left of the picture actually symbolizes there is a ridge through there there is actually a proper footpath on grass so there's a darker shadow that delineates the edge of that then you come down onto this flatter grass which is right near the water and those marks get darker thicker not necessarily more clumsy but certainly more definite as they come to the foreground and very detailed putting a little bit of warmth and uh, dark in there on those tufts where the water is sitting around the foot of them so they get damp and they get dark and then you've got the reflection below that until that moment until i put that in they were just long uh, amber colors on the water but now i'm actually putting in this sort of dark neutral tint burnt umber orangey-ish dark mark that suggests that that's where the water level is sitting around their bases and it fans out into the water and hopefully that conveys the sense of uh, realism. We're just putting a few final marks into this painting they're merely just to finish off and just suggest more definite edges to the water and the bank on the right hand side. So we are we're at the end of it. It's uh, a little painting. I just enjoyed doing it for you and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. And if you have done so, then maybe you'll be so kind as to express any thoughts uh, relating to this video and any ideas that you would like me to consider painting for future videos. It doesn't have to be in watercolor. It could be in any medium. I'm more than happy in any of those. And in the meantime, uh, if you would like to um, put comments in um, about it, then please do so. They'll all be answered and I enjoy reading them, enjoy interacting with you. In the short term, have a go yourself. And if you've enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button, please. It uh, helps me grow the channel, helps me know that people are enjoying it. And in the meantime, there's another video there and there's another video there. I'll catch you all very, very soon. Happy painting. Bye-bye for now.